Achondroplasia is a condition that affects the growth plates, slowing down the rate at which cartilage develops into bone. This results in a type of short stature called dwarfism. Although there is no cure for achondroplasia, we can treat many of its effects. Many children will also experience several medical concerns, which we will discuss here. A middle ear infection, also called otitis media, is a chronic condition that affects nearly half of children with achondroplasia, especially under the age of five. Treatment typically involves the placement of an ear tube. If left untreated, an ear infection can potentially lead to hearing loss. Up to 25% of children with achondroplasia develop some level of hearing loss. Click here to learn more about ear infections. Sleep apnea. Infants and small children should be monitored for sleep apnea, which may sound like snoring. Around 85% of children will need treatment for sleep apnea. Both middle ear infections and sleep apnea are treated by ear, nose, and throat, or ENT doctors, also called otolaryngologists. Children tend to have lower muscle tone and loose joints. This can be treated with physical therapy and usually improves with age. Children may also need speech-language therapy and dental and orthodontic care. The rest of these conditions are considered orthopedic, which means having to do with bones and joints and may require surgery. Our goal with any treatment is to reduce your child's pain, increase their mobility, and increase their quality of life. Genovarum. Some children may have bowed legs, called genovarum, where the knees are too far apart. The leg bone, or tibia, can also be twisted inward. While most cases are benign, some people may experience problems with walking and balance, and, on occasion, pain. For genovarum, guided growth surgery may help these issues. This surgery uses small metal plates, about the size of a paperclip, to lock one side of the growth plate while allowing the other side to grow freely. Over time, this evens out the angle of the knees as your child grows, drawing them back together. To learn more about guided growth surgery, check out this video by clicking here. Kyphosis. Some children may have a noticeable hump in their back, which may happen because of an outward curvature of the spine called kyphosis. It happens when one or more of the vertebrae are wedge-shaped. It typically occurs in the upper lumbar area of the spine, just below the ribcage, but can occur elsewhere. In most children, their kyphosis resolves as they gain the ability to walk. Up to 20% of children, however, will need surgery for kyphosis. Kyphosis can be corrected by a posterior column osteotomy, or PCO. The parts of the spine that are causing the bend are removed, and the spine is placed into a more correct shape through the use of screws and rods, also called instrumentation. The spine is then secured with a fusion, where bone graft is placed around the screws and rods, fusing the vertebra together over the affected region of the spine. The screws and rods are usually permanent, and fusion reduces some of the spine's flexibility, but the lumbar vertebrae that were not fused will still be able to move. Spinal stenosis. Achondroplasia can cause the spinal canal to be narrow, which can compress the spinal cord and nerves over time. This is called spinal stenosis. It can cause pain, weakness, numbness or tingling in the arms and legs, or back and neck pain. Up to 80% of people with achondroplasia may have symptoms of spinal stenosis at some point over their lifetime. Spinal stenosis may require a laminectomy, where the part of the spinal canal, starting with the lamina, is removed on several vertebrae, usually in the lumbar spine. This relieves the pressure on the spinal cord and nerves. In children, 
A laminectomy usually needs an instrumentation infusion to keep the spine stable. Foramen magnum stenosis. Similarly, foramen magnum stenosis is a narrowing at the opening of the base of the skull, which can also cause nerve problems. Some cases may require surgery by a neurosurgeon, where the foramen magnum is carefully widened to give the brainstem more room. Limb lengthening. Surgery for limb lengthening can be controversial. However, there may be cases where limb lengthening is medically necessary to improve function or address other concerns. In those cases, limb lengthening may be appropriate. Most children with achondroplasia do not need surgical intervention. We will work with you and your care team to determine if surgery is necessary and do our best to improve their quality of life. At Children's Hospital Colorado, we are ready to help you and your child on their journey with achondroplasia from before birth into adulthood. Our nationally recognized experts are frontrunners in the latest advances in research and care and serve in our multidisciplinary clinic so you don't have to travel to see different specialists. We are proud to be associated with Little People of America, or LPA, a nonprofit dedicated to providing support, education, and global awareness to issues affecting people of a short stature and their families. To learn more, call us at this number, click the links here, or visit our website by clicking the links in the description below. You can also watch our video on achondroplasia by clicking here.